Like I said in the previous video, most of the time there will be multiple vehicles that will need to go to an emergency scene. And what often happens in that case is that if they're following each other relatively close, the sound of the first one will mask the sound of the next one, and so on in succession. So for that reason, relying only on the sound before crossing the intersection is not enough, look well around you. Now siren sounds are loud and irritating, and that's the whole point of it. Since these are emergency sounds, they really want us to hear them obviously. And the reason why they're high pitched is because high pitched sounds are the sounds our ears are most sensitive to. But a problem with high pitched sounds is that it can become hard to determine where they're coming from, especially when we're inside a vehicle. And that is especially true in places with high buildings or other structures because the sound bounces a lot between them, spreading everywhere. So every time you hear an emergency vehicle, be very attentive, check the mirrors and all around, and if you're approaching an intersection, don't cross it without making sure that you know where the emergency vehicle is coming from. And that's even if you have a green light, or if you're about to cross any kind of intersection where you'd normally have priority. Now, even though the direction of the sound is something that's sometimes hard to determine, one thing that you'll be able to determine better is sound level, or volume. If the sound is getting louder, the emergency vehicle is coming towards you. If it's getting quieter, it's going away from you. So use that to make your decisions. Now, you might have seen, or you might see in the future, police vehicles crossing an intersection while in an emergency, with the emergency flashing lights activated, but not the sirens. And you'll surely wonder why they don't activate them. The reason for this is, in some cases, they're heading to a crime scene where the crime is still taking place, so they don't want to let the criminal know that they're coming. They want to catch them. By warning them with the siren sound, the criminal could have enough time to get away. So there's really nothing specific that you can do here since you never know when that will happen, besides of course always being careful before crossing an intersection, even when the light is green. But that's something you should always do anyway. Just a quick glance to both sides before crossing. Basically, be aware of your surroundings when crossing a green light or any other kind of intersection where you have priority, instead of just doing it blindly and thinking, since I have priority, nothing unusual could happen here. Don't worry though, police officers are trained to do that safely, so they won't just cross an intersection blindly when they do that. They'll slow down and check carefully. And the opposite is also true. Sometimes an emergency vehicle will have the sirens blasting even when not necessarily needed. For example, in a situation where there are no intersections to cross, they might still blast the sirens for the psychological factor. They want to let the people who were involved in an accident know that they're coming. Which is important, because in those situations, people are usually in a state of shock. They need all the reassurance they can get. Also, something that you might have started to hear more recently in some places are siren sounds with lower frequencies added to the main sound. Take a listen. Now, the reason for those added lower frequencies, or bass, is that they help the sound travel further, they help people feel the sound too, instead of just hearing it, because it creates vibrations, and they also help a bit in locating the sound. It's the same phenomenon that happens when you hear a car with loud music approaching. When the car is far away, you can hear the bass a lot, but not much else. As it gets closer, then you start hearing the higher frequencies. At a certain point, you can even start to understand the lyrics. Help us like and subscribe to Conduit Facile. Sit back. Oh, and by the way, in a lot of places, it's illegal to drive with your music too loud. Not only are you noise polluting, but it can also mask the sound of an emergency vehicle nearby. So it means that not only does it make it harder for the people around to hear an emergency vehicle, but you yourself might not hear it. So you become a danger for the people around you, the emergency vehicle operators, and yourself. So turn that volume down to a reasonable level and save yourself a fine and your ears.
Now you might have noticed that when police officers stop someone on the road, they position their cars a bit inside the adjacent lane. This is to create a safety buffer between them and the traffic. But depending on where you drive, there might also be a law called the move over law. The move over law states that you need to leave a whole lane free between you and an emergency vehicle you're passing, if possible, if they have their flashing lights activated. The reason for that is to leave a safety zone in that immediate vicinity of the vehicle for the workers. If you have to cross a solid line into the opposite direction on a two-way street, forget about trying not to step on the opposite lane too much. Just keep enough distance. Make sure to yield to the traffic in the opposite direction before doing it, of course, and make sure that it's safe to do the whole maneuver. If it's not possible to leave a whole lane, slow down and leave as much distance as possible between you and the emergency vehicle. The closer the emergency vehicle, the more you should slow down. And this law doesn't apply to emergency vehicles only. It also applies to some maintenance vehicles, like tow trucks, for example, and some government vehicles, like traffic control. Maintenance and government vehicles will usually have yellow lights, while police vehicles will have red and blue ones, and on ambulances and fire trucks, they're red. But that might be different depending on where you drive. And note that this is only when the vehicles have their emergency flashing lights activated. If they don't, you don't necessarily need to leave a whole lane between you and them, but you still have to keep a safe distance, of course, just like in any other situation. Be careful with this one, because besides the potential for avoiding serious injuries or even saving lives, if you don't respect the move over law, the fines can be pretty heavy, both in terms of money and of the merit points. In conclusion, emergency professionals already put their lives at risk every day to keep us safe so we should try to help make their job as easy as possible for them. In the next video, external factors at the exam. In other words, some things you don't necessarily have complete control of, but can still do something about. The video after that will be about some things that you do have control of that can make your exam easier. So stay tuned and see you soon. 14,